Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE, covering Polygon 18. Hello, Brought welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage from the Bahamas. We're here at Polycon 18, put on by Polymath and Grit Capital. This is a, an amazing event. It's really um, the cryptocurrency, blockchain, token economics, the decentralized future internet is happening now. The industry is forming. The Cube is starting its 2018 run, and we'll cover all the top events this year in the crypto. As you know, we know cloud, big data, we do all those other events. We're going to start covering in a big way because the ecosystem is formed. You're seeing people making money, the early whales, the big guys. Now you've got institutional investors coming in. A real ecosystem dynamic. This is what industries look like when they're formed. Our next guest is Carlos Domingo, founder and managing partner at Spice VC and the founder and chairman at Securitize. One of the, the tell signs of a maturing ecosystem that's growing very fast is companies that are adding value. You, you're one of them, Carlos. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me here. So, you know, Dave Vellante, who just had to jump on a plane because of the snowstorm in Boston, would comment, he would say, because we talk about this all the time, <laughs> you know, you look for the big waves and you see what's happening, but how do you know when there's a tipping point in a new industry? And that's when there's the stuff being created, value being captured, industry being formed with an ecosystem and a community. This is absolutely happening. Correct. You're bringing a very valuable service to market. You guys self-funded this operation, securitize. You're automating other value chains that were old guard businesses in a new way. Correct. Take a minute to explain, securitize, why the idea, what you guys have built, what you got going on, and what's the disruption of that product. Good, so um, the idea came originally because last year, uh, me and my partners, we. We wanted to tokenize a VC fund uh, and you know, basically issue a security token uh, that contains the economic rights of the, of the fund um, as a way to provide liquidity to the investors because liquidity on the VC space is one of the biggest problems, right? Like you invest money and it takes like seven to 10 years and then you can actually get your money back. Um, so we had that idea that Time Blockchain Capital had uh, done uh, you know, one security token, was the first security token for a $10 million offering and we wanted to kind of build on that. So we went out and looked for people that could actually do the issuance of the security token in a regulated way. So do the KYC, the AML, the accreditation process per country, not just for the US, then um, you know, basically run the, the ICO in a secure way with secure wallets for different cryptocurrencies and then also have the smart contract issuing the token, but also smart contract managing what happens with the token on the secondary market, which is very important, right? Because in the secondary market, the tokens can actually move from a wallet to a wallet, and suddenly you're outside the regulatory framework that you, you know, protected at the beginning, right? So we went out and talked, you know, Polymath and many, a few companies that were doing that, and no one was actually ready with a platform uh, last year. Um, so we are all, you know, tech entrepreneurs and, you know, product people, so we did what we know how to do. We hired a CTO, hired engineers, and went and built our own platform for, for Spice VC, for tokenizing the fund. And then when we announced the project, uh, like around September, October last year, you know, I posted the medium about the investment process and the screenshots of the platform, how it works, all the features that it has. Uh, we've also integrated uh, Bancor as a decentralized exchange to provide liquidity. Um, and then I started getting flooded with people saying, wow, this is very cool. Yeah, we want to do security tokens. We think this is the future. And no one actually is ready with a platform and you guys seem to have one. So who has built it? And I tell people, we built it. It's our platform. And then we took the decision last year to basically separate the platform from the fund and the fund come, becoming the first customer. And we created Securitize, which is basically a, an end-to-end -end, uh, issuance platform for security tokens. And so this is really filling a void for um, people who want to either raise money for a startup-like venture, um, and then also maybe want to raise cryptocurrency and capital for growing a business that they're tokenizing. Mm -hmm. That's a big trend. So you got the, the startup, hey, I got a great idea, wrote a white paper, we're going to revolutionize the world, people are interested. They, everyone, some people call it the dumbest idea they've ever seen, which turns into a billion dollar idea, because that's the way it works. <laughs> so they got to raise some cash. <laughs> and then there's the business that are growing saying, you know, I can grow with working capital in a tokenized environment because the business model shifts for that. Correct. I think that the, what people don't realize is that, you know, getting actual liquidity uh, in a market, like doing an IPO, is either very difficult or very expensive or both things. Yeah. So, so I think this allows... And the hurdle is very high. Yeah, the hurdle is very high. The, the cost could be like 10 to 12% of the money you raise, you know, paying the underwriters and paying everyone to, to get it done. Um, so I think that uh, what tokenizing real world assets like asset-backed tokens or security tokens is basically allows you for two things. One is, you know, the network of investors you can actually reach is anyone with an internet connection yeah. that within the regulation in their country are allowed to invest. So suddenly you've multiplied by 100 
the reach you have in terms of finding investors. And second, it's, it's cheaper to do it, it's less friction. Um, third, is like managing all these thousands of investors would not be possible in the traditional financial system, right? Because you will have investors from many countries with different currencies, different bank accounts, different banks, and with a smart contract and tokens, you can automate the entire process. It's very and from scalable. your accent, you're obviously not in the U.S., not American, but you're from? I'm from Barcelona. Barcelona, <laughs> so you're really laid back, you're chill about this, but you're hardcore techie, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so let me just go through the process here. So what's interesting to me is, first of all, I love cloud computing. I think what DevOps has done on software with yep. open source, that's clearly in line with crypto market, same mission. Automation is a real big deal. When you can automate something down Perfect. to efficient process, okay. you're doing. You guys are doing those different. It's, well, not different, it's automated and great, but the investment piece is accredited investors, right? Is that, am I getting it, it right? It depends on the jurisdiction. Okay. Um, so, uh, for most, most countries have security laws, uh, so what our platform does is we'll actually or, you know, identify, do the KYC and IML on the investor, and depending on the jurisdiction where you're from, we will apply a, a different rule. The, because, you know, in the US it's accredited investors only, uh, yeah. but in, uh, in other countries you can take a small portion of retail. Um, also, the meaning of accredited investor is different, uh, mm -hmm. how you actually comply with that. The documentation you need to collect or not collect uh, for validating that someone's an accredited investor is not the same in the US than in other jurisdictions. Yeah, yeah. All right, so here's the problem that I, I see you solving. Make, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm a company, XYZ Corporation, we're growing like crazy, and we could tokenize our business, and we say, hey, we could raise a token, because we actually have a product, and security token's a great vehicle. Sure. Um, so they go to their lawyer, well, you're in the US, so you can only get credit investors. And if you want to go outside the US, you got to go to the Cayman Islands or somewhere else, set up a new company and do all that stuff, because they have to manage the process, <laughs> and they got to go find investors. Correct. That's hard. That's hard. Okay, do you solve that problem for them? We streamline the problem, so we will basically, first, you know, the fact that you set up the company in Cayman doesn't actually prevent you from, you know, the regulation in each country because the regulators care about where the investor sits, not where the company is. Yeah. Um, so what we solve the problem is basically allow them to provide a liquidity event, do fundraising, and provide liquidity for, uh, for the investors uh, on the secondary market. Um, so we basically will save them the trouble of having to figure out how to do all this process country by country. So it's a liquidity value too, so it's also getting the process done, streamlined, Correct. and then managing some liquidity challenges that the company would have to put cycles into, Correct. managing it. Exactly. Okay, so um, here's a question. So this is like a consulting hour for the people watching. I'm a company, XYZ Corporation, mm -hmm. I want to tokenize my business. Now we've been up and running for a few years, and we say, hey, to securitize is really interesting. These guys are amazing, they're the same ethos as us, they're cloud guys, they're automating. Let's just go through them, let's sign up, we apply to mm -hmm. you. What do we do? Do I have to set up a new company? Is there risk Not issues? What, so, what's your advice on the playbook? For so the fact, because you're using a security, you don't actually have to go to other uh, jurisdictions, right? You can just do it from wherever you are because you're issuing a security that mm -hmm. assigns some economic interest on your, on your business, right? Um, now in terms of us, uh, we're trying to become kind of like a, the, the quality security token ICO yep. uh, play, so we curate a lot the, and decide which ones we bring on board or not. Uh, first, because we have so many, we have hundreds of leads uh, coming to us all the time. And second, because we want to make sure that people go to securitize, they know that those are quality companies that we've better than our lawyers have yep. checked, that the company's interesting, that the company is going to do well, not only in the fundraising, but mm -hmm. later down the road. Uh, so that's what about the legal and regulatory challenges? So again, most people do a new cope because they want to protect their corporate shield. There's a corporate shield to protect themselves. You know, investors always are gun shy or trigger happy when it comes to suing people, especially <laughs> in, these, in this economy. Um, how does an entrepreneur protect, or a business manager protect against that? Is there, do you guys handle some of that or is it just you know, buyer beware kind of thing? No, so we work with our attorneys, uh, Katten in New York, uh, specialists in securities, um, and we basically will advise the customer that actually uses our attorneys because they've already experienced on doing this. Um, then in terms of investor protection, uh, on a security token, you're not just getting the token, you actually sign mm -hmm. a uh, subscription agreement, which is a legal binding document that explains exactly what the token is going to do, and there's an information memorandum, which is basically describing what the business is going to do. So, yeah. so there's a legal framework uh, off-chain, if you want, alongside the on-chain yeah. you know, token and the smart contract side. So all that stuff's happening, it's awesome. All right, I want to change gears, Carlos. Talk about, um, talk about you. Why, why do this? <laughs> what, what drove you here? Are you scratching an itch? Are you a serial entrepreneur? What, how did you get here? What's the story? So the story is I've been 
this is kind of like the third phase of my career. My first 10 years of career, I was at the middle of the dot-com, uh, you know, boom. I, you know, I took a company public in Nasdaq, Japan, and then went to the U.S., acquired three companies, and then everything crashed, so I lived both uh, the up and the down. <laughs> the second part of my career, starting in 2006, uh, and it lasted for another 10 years, uh, which is uh, I joined uh, Telefonica, one of the largest telcos in the world, and I lived through all the, you know, mobile, boom, with your iPhone coming out in 2007, Android in 2008, and all the excitement happened in the industry. But to be honest with you, I was looking for like, what is the, the next thing I do? Because all these industries now, yeah. you know, are not as exciting anymore, right? So, so I came across, uh, you know, blockchain and, and crypto uh, through two, two things. One is I was, I was doing a project on smart cities in Dubai, where I live, where we started looking at blockchain and run, you know, some pilots. And then one of my, my colleagues and friends uh, is Brendan Eich, who, you know, is the founder of Mozilla, and he actually did an ICO for a company called Brave in, in March last year. And when I saw that, I was like, Brave wow. browser? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, batch open, so very familiar, great, great offering. He's a great, he's a great entrepreneur, the, the guy's invented JavaScript, and when, he's, when I saw he did that, he actually, I met him actually a year ago, and I met him this week as well in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress, and, and when I saw what he did, it's like, wow, this is very revolutionary, right? So this is a completely different way of you know, raising money, and it's also a great way for investors because you get liquidity, so why not trying to get there and yeah. find a project? So started with Cere the fun, and then moved Cereal to- Serial entrepreneur, great story. A lot of experience coming into crypto. So you got some, you know, young guns who are you know, <laughs> inventing and making some cash and doing well. Also starting funds. You got developers and business entrepreneurs who are successful and they're becoming investors. Then you got the pros coming in, alpha, alpha geeks, uh, serial entrepreneurs, pros on the banking side, mm -hmm. all think differently and they see the vision. So I got to ask you, what is your vision of the decentralized internet? Have you seen how telcos work? And you know their challenges, over the top yeah, content, you know, centralized organization, you see what Brave's doing, you've lived the dot com up and down. What's your vision of the decentralized internet? How would you describe how big the wave is and what's the opportunity? So I think that um, if you think about why people were excited in 1994, 1995 about the internet, it's precisely because the internet promised the decentralization back then, right? So there were all these protocols that allow you to, you know, move voice, move data, mm -hmm. move uh, web pages that, you know, were going to disintermediate people. And what happened is every, you know, a lot of the traditional players got disintermediated, but then the, yeah. the, the weight shifted into other players, which are now highly concentrated and centralized, right? If you think about Facebook or Google. Or, so I think that the excitement around, around crypto is about, you know, making reality the decentralized internet that didn't happen the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And I think because the, the protocols have a, a way to monetize and there's a, an economic incentive yeah, yeah. to be part of the, of the network, this time will be different. I think and cloud time. computing has also helped a little bit too because with open source and cloud computing, you have a great creative environment on the technology side. Correct. This is like open source money if you want, if you think about like crypto. Yeah, yeah. So I think yes, the, the fact that the, the maturity of some adjacent technologies is helping this you know, move faster. Yeah, yeah. And open source has been a proven formula one second tier citizen when I was growing up in the open source community. I remember people were poo-pooing uh, Linux back in the day and <laughs> also now it's a tier one power in the world. And yep. now you have community modeling around how that worked. How would you compare and contrast? And you have other things coming into this too. You got cryptography ecosystems, you got gamers and cryptocurrency and you got a cloud. Mm -hmm. How would you tease out the, you know, the industry and describe the cryptocurrency and the blockchain communities? I mean, it's kind of a confluence. I think a it's, a, it's a very interesting industry, and it has forced myself also to have to learn about adjacent, uh, you know, topics, right? Because you're going to understand about, uh, you know, technology, but you're going to understand about, you know, software, about cryptography. You're going to understand about finance and economy to understand what a monetary policy is and how you're going to define that into your token. <laughs> you're going to understand about finance if you do security tokens, you know, securities laws. So it's fascinating because of this confluence of different, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, teams. We were having a joke on, on one of our broadcasts. I said to uh, you know, my co-host, I think startups will soon have a CTO, a CEO, and a chief economic officer. Correct. I mean, this is kind of token Makes economics. Makes all the sense. I mean, you're going to have to decide, hey, do we increase <laughs> the counsel. coin rate? We're going to drop this down? I mean, it's a big human dynamic there. Correct. I think this is for me why I'm so excited about it, because I was kind of bored of being in an industry for 10 years. You, you feel that you already know more or less everything, and yes, there's new things coming, but are kind of like incremental improvements. Uh, yeah. This feels like a you know exponential yeah. improvement, something that's going to really change uh, things. And as you said, it forces you to understand more disciplines than just software yeah. or technology. I mean, if you use a California example to end the segment, you know, you see the waves coming and, and the surfers grabbing their boards and they're on the wave hanging 10. And, and that's what's going on. You're seeing the best people attracted to this space because their problems or opportunities, there's challenges. Correct. And there's a social impact, mission-driven uh, impact. I think people are seeing that. And, and it's attracting 
new entrants into the space. Um, from banking, all sectors now coming in, they're seeing the ecosystem develop. How would you see that going? Because and we do agree that the ecosystem is forming pretty quickly. It is forming very, very quickly, surprisingly quickly. And I think that um, one of the things you mentioned is that the fact that I don't know, people like me or other people that come from you know, long-standing backgrounds on tech uh, are moving into this industry, it will also make the industry kind of grow faster. Uh, because the industry is a bit immature if you want, uh, in terms of everything technology, this is why there's so many hacks, yeah. the usability of the products is still not there. Yeah. Uh, so as more people from, from the traditional tech industry move here and start building yeah. you know, good products, this will actually change uh, very quickly. Great leadership, Carlos, on your end. Congratulations. You're Thank seeing you. an opportunity, you're making a difference, you're putting out a great product and service I think people are going to use a lot of, and looking forward to chatting more about it. Of course, you've got a VC fund, and you're doing some investments to you know, put some skin in the game as well. Correct. Uh, with, your, with your companies, congratulations. This is theCUBE live coverage. Uh, we'll be back with more here in the Bahamas. And a uh, friend from Barcelona here, great entrepreneur, I'm looking forward to chatting more about the decentralized economics, the technology, how the value will be captured, the technology that's going to enable that and the impact of society. It's theCUBE, more live coverage after this short break. Oh,